Section 1 of Wheels, The Third Cycle This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eva Davis, Nemo, Kate Barrett, Newgate Novelist, and Algie Pug. London Squares by Osbert Sitwell Tonight this city seems delirious. The air is fevered, hot and heavy. Yet each street, each tortuous lane and slumbering stone-bound square smells of the open woods, so wild and sweet through the dim spaces where each town bred tree sweeps out mysterious and tall and still the country's passionate spirit old and free flings off the fetters of the calm and chill there in the garden fawns leap out and sing chant those strange sun-born songs from far away with joyous ecstasy in this new spring they cast the coats and top hats of the day there by the railings where the women pace with painted faces passionless and dead out of the dark pan shows his leering face mocks their large hats and faces painted red then as they walk away he mocks their lives racking each wearied soul with lost desires and cruelty more subtle he contrives with aching memories of love's first fires to tune their hearts up to a different key so when they sleep the withered years unfold again as children round a mother's knee they listen to their future as foretold a future rich and innocent and gay then wake up to the agony of day end of section Section 2 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Clavichords by Osbert Sitwell. To Mrs. Gordon Woodhouse. Its pure and dulcet tone, so clear and cool, rings out, though muffled by the centuries passed by each note a distant sigh from some dead lovely throat a sad cascade of sound floods the dim room with faded memories of beauty that has gone like the reflected rhythm in some dusk blue pool of dancing figures long laid in the ground like moonlit skies or some far song harmonious and sublime breaking the leaden slumber of the night a perfume faint yet fair as of an old pressed blossom that's reborn seeming to flower alone within the arid wilderness of time the music fills the air soft as the outspread fluttering wings of flower bright butterflies that dive and float through the sweet rose flushed hours of summer dawn the rippling sound of silver strings break o'er our senses as small foaming waves break over rocks and into hidden caves of silent waters never to be found 
waters as clear and glistening as gems. And in this ancient pool of melodies, so soothing, deep, we search for strange lost images and diadems and old drowned pleasures each one shining bright and rescued from the crystal depths of sleep as the far sun-kissed sails of some full-rigged boat blown by a salt cool breeze laden with age-old treasures and rich merchandise fade into evening on the foam-flecked seas so this last glowing note hovers a while, then dies. End of section. Section three of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Metamorphosis by Osbert Sitwell. The woods that ever love the moon rest calm and white beneath a mist-wrapped hill. An owl, horned wizard of the night, flaps through the air so soft and still. Moaning, it wings its flight far from the forest cool, to find the star-entangled surface of a pool where it may drink its fill of stars. A blossom-laden breeze scatters its treasures, each a fallen moon among the waiting trees, bears back the faded shadow sense of noon. The whispering wood is full of dim, vague fears. The rustling branches sway and listen for some sound from far away. A silver piping down the pagan years since time's first joyous birth. The listening trees all sigh. The moment of their horned king is nigh. Then, peal on peal, there sounds the fierce, wild mirth of Pan their master, lord and king, and round him in a moonlit ring his court so wan and sly but then the trees closed round and hid from sight their deeds the voices seemed to die an owl horned wizard of the night flaps through the air so soft and still moans as it wings its flight toward the mist-wrapped hill. End of section. Section 4 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. This Generation by Osbert Sitwell. From Every Man to Helen. Their youth was fevered, passionate, quick to drain the last few pleasures from this cup of life before they turned to such the dregs of pain and end their young old lives in mortal strife. They paid the debts of many a hundred year of foolishness and riches in alloy. They went to death nor did they shed a tear for all they sacrificed of love and joy. Their tears ran dry when they were in the womb, for, entering life, they found it was their tomb. 1917 End of section Section 5 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Youth and Age 
by Osbert Sitwell. One, Youth. Outside the church, the morning children cried, for some old man, who died of ripe old age, mourning his short appearance on this stage. They said, he was but seventy, and then he died. Two, the old. Throughout this dreadful war we sit and sigh for all the youthful millions that must die. Yet still we see God's mercy, and we say, they knew not sorrow, cast their lives away in all their powerful promise of the spring. They saw not autumn, thus were doubly blessed. They never lost their faculties, we sing, warming our withered hands. Perhaps it's for the best. Their loss was cruel, or shall we say their gain? Yet it's the country's glory and its pain. And thus eternally old age shall sit, mouthing youth sorrows for its benefit. Why can't the old keep quiet and sit and sigh? Or failing that, why can't they fail and die? End of section. Section 6 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Song of the Fawns by Osbert Sitwell. When woods are white beneath the moon, and grass is wet with crystal dew. When in the pool, so clear and cool, the moon reflects itself anew. We raise ourselves from daylight's swoon, we shake away the sleep of day. Out from our bosky homes we spring, horns wreathed with flowers throughout the hours. Of moonlight, worshipping we sing. Pale ivory goddess, whose wan light looks down upon us worshipping. Each dappled fawn who shuns the dawn is here in rarest gifts we bring. The feathers of the birds of night wrought to a crown of softest down we offer you in crystal bright the dew within a lily cup reflecting stars and shining bars all things most strange we offer up rich gifts of fruit and honeyed flowers to place within your secret bowers we shake down apples from the trees and pears and plums with velvet skin up to the sky we cast these high and pray you'll stoop to net these in we dance then fall upon our knees and pray and sing all this to show the love that all loyal fawns must owe to you white goddess of the night but no more play we must away the eastern sky is growing bright end of section section seven of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain zoo celeste by aldous huxley au coin le plus obscur du jardin des déesses dort le singe idéal dont les immenses fesses étalent de l'azur les éblouissements une négresse allait un troupeau d'éléphants mignons de limpe dont la trompe aux pâles lèvres s'énivre d'un lait noir et qui donne les fièvres puis abreuvés ils vont balançant sur le dos le haut machicoulis fantasque des châteaux d'ivoire et de jet broutés dans la prairie les baleines de cuir rêvant sur l'eau fleurie font jaillir le cristal tournoyant de leurs trombes qui montent vers le ciel se lassent puis retombe avec un clapotis sonore de tambours sur les lotis gonflés de parfums et d'amour comme les chairs en feu de l'anadiomène 
Voici sur l'or de la plage qui se promène, BMO. Et dans l'air, voici le roc géant qui pond de temps à autre au giro du néant de nouveaux univers complets, chacun garni d'un petit tout-puissant qui se croit infini. End of section. Section 8 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Fatigue by Aldous Huxley. The mind has lost its Aristotelian elegance of shape. There is only a darkness where bubbles and inconsequent balloons float up to burst their luminous cheeks and vanish. A woman with a basket on her head, a Chinese lantern quite askew the vague bright bulging of chemists window bottles and then in my ears the distant noise of a great river of people and phrases phrases it is only a question of saddlebags stain street and gondibert foals in iceland or was it foals in aspic as that small reddish devil turns away with an insolent jut of his hindquarters I became aware that his curling pug's tail is an electric belt push. But that does not disquiet me so much as the sight of all these polished statues, twinkling with highlights, and all of them grotesque, and all of them colossal. End of section. Section 9 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Merry-Go-Round by Aldous Huxley The machine is ready to start. The symbolic beasts grow resty, curveting where they stand at their places in the great blue circle of the year. The showman's voice rings out, Montez, mesdames et messieurs, montez. You, sir, must bestride the ram. You will take the scorpion. Yours, madame, is the goat. As for you there, blackguard boy, you must be content with the fishes. I have allotted you the virgin, mademoiselle. Polisson! Pardon, pardon! Évidemment, c'est le sagittaire qu'on demande. Oh, les dards! The rest must take what comes. The twins shall counterpoise one another in the scales. So, so, now away we go. Away! <sighs> what keen air! wind of the upper spaces snuff it deep drink in the intoxication of our speed hark how the music swells and rings sphery music music of every vagabond planet every rooted star sound of winds and seas and all the simmering millions of life moving singing so with a roar and a rush round we go and round forever whirling on a ceaseless bank holiday of drunken life and speed. But I happened to look inwards among the machinery of our roundabout, and there I saw a slobbering cretin grinding at a wheel and sweating as he ground and grinding eternally, and when I perceived that he was the author of all our speed, and that the music was of his making, that everything depended on his grinding wheel, I thought I would like to get off. We were going too fast. End of section. Section 10 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Gothic by Aldous Huxley. Sharp spires pierce upwards, and the clouds are full of tumbling bells. Reckless, breakneck head over heels down an airy spiral of stairs run the bells upon paul's steeple stands a tree up again and then once more to the bottom two steps at a time as full of apples as can be up again and down again centuries of climbing have not worn the crystal smoothness of the degrees along the bellying clouds the little boys of london town come running running as best they may seeing that at every step they sink ankle deep through the woolly surface into the black heart of thunder beneath 
the apples on the trees are swaying in the wind rocking to the clamour of bells the leaves are of bright green copper and rattle together with a scaly sound at the roots of the tree sit four gargoyles playing a little serious game with dice the hunchbacked ape has won from the manticore that crooked french crown with a hole in it which the manticore got from the friar with the strawberry nose he had it in turn as an alms from the grave knight who lies with cross legs down there through the clouds and the dizzy mist of bell ringing where the great church is a hollow ship full of bright candles and stable in the midst of dark tempestuous seas End of section. Section eleven of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Evening Party by Aldous Huxley. Sans espoir, sans espoir sang the lady while the piano laboriously opened its box of old sardines in treacle one detected ptomaine in the syrup sans espoir i thought of the rhymes soir nonchaloir reposoir the dying falls of a symbolism grown sadly suicidal before the broad flemish back of the singer the dewlaps of her audience sans espoir the listeners wore the frozen rapture of those who gaze upon the uplifted host catching one another's eye we had a simultaneous vision of pews of hyenas and hysteria three candles were burning they behaved like english aristocrats in a french novel perfectly impassively i tried to imitate their my lordliness one of the candles flickered snickered was it a draught or was it laughter flickering snickering candles you betrayed me i had to laugh too end of section section twelve of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain beauty by aldous huxley one there is a sea somewhere whether in the lampless crypts of the earth or among sunlit islands or that which is an unfathomable and terrifying question between the archipelagos of stars there is a sea and perhaps its tides have filled those green transparent pools that glint like eyes in a spring storm cloud which is forever troubled and in travail a bubbling and a heaving up of waters as though for the birth of a fountain the sick and the crippled lie along the brims in expectation of the miracle and at last at last a funnel of white water is twisted up and so stands straight and still by the very speed of its motion it drinks the light slowly it is infused with colour rose and mother of pearl slowly it takes shape a heavenly body oh dazzling anadiomene the flakes of foam break into white birds about her head fall again in a soft avalanche of flowers perpetual miracle beauty endlessly born two steamers in all your travelling have you trailed the meshes of your long expiring white nets across this sea or dipped in it your sliding rail or balanced your shadow far far down upon its glass green sand or forgetting the preoccupations of commerce and the well-oiled predestination of your machinery did you ever put in at the real paphos three in the city of troy whither our argonautical voyages had carried us we found helen and that lamentable cressid who was to chaucer the feminine paradox untenably fantastic but so devastatingly actual the crystal ideal flawed and to shakespeare the inevitable troll 
flayed to show her physiological machinery and the logical conclusion of every the most heartrendingly ingenuous gesture of maidenhood but bless you our gorge doesn't rise we are cynically well up in the damning theory of woman which makes it all the more amusing to watch ourselves in the ecstatic practice of her unforeseen perversity fabulous helen at her firm breasts they used to mould delicate drinking cups which made the sourest vinegar richly poisonous the geometry of her body had utterly outwitted euclid and the philosophers were baffled by curves of a subtlety infinitely more elusive and eleusinian than the most oracular speculations of parmenides they did their best to make a coherent system out of the incompatible but empirically established facts of her time for instance was abolished within the circle of her arms it is eternity when her lips touch me paris had remarked and yet this same paris was manifestly and notoriously falling into a decline had lost whatever sense or beauty he once possessed together with his memory and all skill in the nine arts which are memory's daughters how was it then these perplexed philosophers wondered that she could at one and the same moment give eternity like a goddess while she was vampiring away with that divine thirsty mouth of hers the last dregs of a poor mortal life they sought an insufficient refuge in heraclitus theory of opposites meanwhile troilus was always to be found at sunset pacing up and down the walls by the western gate quite mad at dusk the greek campfires would blossom along xanthus banks one after another a myriad lights dancing in the dark as when the moon refulgent lamp of night o'er heaven's pure azure spreads her something light he would repeat the simile to himself but could never remember the correct epithets not that they mattered any more than anything else four there are fine cities in the world manhattan exbatna and hecatompylus but this city of troy is the most fabulous of them all rome with seven hills of butcher's meat athens an abstraction of marble in alexandria the steam of kidney puddings revolted the cenobites darkness and size rendered london inappreciable paris is full of sparrows the snow lies gritty on berlin moscow has no very similitude all the east is peopled by masts and apes and larva but this city of troy is most of all real and fabulous with its charnel beauty is not helen the end of our search paradisal little world symbol and epitome of the great dawn sleeps in the transparent shadow of roses within her ear the stainless candour of infinity far-off peaks in summer in the milky way has taken marvellous form in her the little world has its meteors too comets in shadowy clouds of hair stars at whose glance men go planet struck meteors yes in history it has the past is still alive in the fragrance of her hair and her young body breathes forth memories as old as the beginning of life eros first of gods in her is the goal i rest here with helen fool i said quote your faustus i go further five further but a hundred lilliputian tethers prevent me the white nerves which tie soul to skin and the whole air is aching with epidermical magnetism further further but troy is the birthplace of my homesickness 
Troy is more than a patriotism, for it is built of my very flesh. The remembrance of it is a fire that sticks and tears when I would pull it off. But, further, one last look at Troilus, where he stands by the western gate, staring over the plain. Further, when I have learnt the truth, I will return and build a new palace with domes less ominously like breasts. And there I will invent a safer Helen and a less paradoxical Cressid, and my harem will be a library for enlightenment. 6. Here are pagodas of diminishing bells. The leopard sleeps in the depth of his rosy cavern, and when he breathes it is a smell of irresistible sweetness. In the bestiaries he is the symbol of Christ in his sepulchre. This listening conch has collected all the rumors of pantheism, the dew in this veined cup is the sacrament of nature, while these pale theorbals worship in the dark with yellow lamps and incense. Everywhere, alchemical profusion, the golden mintage of glades and ripples, vigils of passion enriched with silver under the fingers of the moon. Everywhere, lavishness, color, music, the smoothness of machinery, incredible and fantastic ingenuities. God has lost his half-hunter in the desert. But we have not come to worship among these Gothic beaches, for all their pillars and the lacework of their green windows. We are looking for other things than churches. 7. Trees, the half-fossilized exuberances of a passionate life, petrified fountains of intemperance. With their abolition begins the realm of reason. Geometry, lines, and planes, smooth edges, the ordered horror of perspectives. In this country there are pavements bright and sleek as water. The walls are precipices to which giants have nailed a perpetual cataract of marble. The fringes of the sky are scalloped with a pattern of domes and minarets. At night, too, the down-struck lamps are pyramids of phantom green, and the perfect circle they make upon the pavement is magical. Look over the parapet of the Acropolis. The bridges go dizzily down on their swaying catenaries. The gulls flight chained fast. The walls drop clear into the valley. All the millions of basalt blocks calcined into a single red monolith, fluted with thirstily shining organ pipes, which seem forever wet. There are no crevices for moss and toad flax, and even the claws of the yellow lichen slip on its polished flanks. The valley is all paved and inlaid with rivers of steel. No trees, for they have been abolished. Glorious unnature! cries the watcher at the parapet. His voice launches into the abyss, following the curve of the bridges. Glorious unnature! We have triumphed. But his laughter, as it descends, is like a flight of broken steps. 8. Let us abandon ourselves to time, which is beauty's essence. We live among the perpetual degenerations of apotheosis. Sunset dissolves into soft gray snow, and the deep ocean of midnight, boundless as forgetfulness or some yet undiscovered Pacific, contracts into the green puddle of the dawn. The flowers burn to dust, with their own brightness. On the banks of ancient rivers stand the pitiful stumps of huge towers and the ghosts of dead men straining to return into life. The woods are full of the smell of transience. Beauty, then, is that moment of descent when apotheosis tilts its wings downwards into the gulf. 
the ends of the curve lose themselves parabolically somewhere in infinity our sentimental eyes see only the middle section of this degeneration knowing neither the upper nor the lower extremes which some have thought to meet godhead and annihilation old curiosity shops if i have said mortality is beauty it was a weakness the sense of time is a symptom of anemia of the soul through which flows angelic ichor we must escape from the dust of the shop cloistered darkness and sleep offer us their lotuses not to perceive where all is ugly eaten into by the syphilis of time heart sickening this is beauty not to desire where death is the only consummation wisdom night is a measureless deep silence daybreak brings back the fetid gutters of the town o oh, supreme beauty of a night that knows no limitations stars or the jagged edges of cock crowing desperate my mind has desired it never my blood whose pulse is a rhythm of the world at the other extreme beatrice lacks solidity is as unresponsive to your kisses as mathematics she too is an oubliette not a ray of life an oubliette that admittedly shoots you upwards into light not down to death but it comes to the same thing in the end what then is the common measure to take the world as it is but metaphorically informing the chaos of nature with a soul qualifying transience with eternity when flowers are thoughts and lonely poplars fountains of aspiring longing when our actions are the poem of which all geographies and architectures in every science in all the unclassed individual odds and ends are the words when even helen's white voluptuousness matches some candor of the soul then it will have been found the permanent and living loveliness it is not a far-fetched dear-bought gem no pomander to be smelt only when the crowd becomes too stinkingly insistent it is not a birth of rare oboes or violins not visible only from ten to six by state permission at a nominal charge not a thing richly apart but an ethic a way of belief and of practice of faith in works medieval in its implication with the very threads of life i desire no Paphian cloister of pink monks, rather a rosy brotherhood of common life, eating, drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, taking and taken in adultery, reading, thinking, and when thinking fails, feeling immeasurably more subtly, sometimes perhaps creating. Arduous search for one who is chained by his desires to dead carcasses whose eyes are dimmed with tears by the slow heart-breaking twilights full of old family ghosts laid in lavender whose despair cries out for opiate and anodyne craving gross sleep or a place on the airy unsupported pinnacles which hang in the sterile upper chambers of ether Von Trotter, head in air. Your centaurs are your only poets. Their hoofs strike sparks from the flints, and they see both very near and immensely far. End of section. Section 13 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Exile by Arnold James I am kept with walls of iron From the place where once the beechen shadow trellised lane Held visions of thy presence. And I pace the outer dust in poverty and pain. Amid the murmuring of the summer rain, a drip on leaves, amid the wanton race of the frolic winds, sounds only one refrain. I am barred thy presence, banished from thy face. Hast thou perchance some secret builded bower? wrought in the breast of this stern battlement whence unperceived thou watchest hour by hour such as are wanderers in the wilderness how some go by with song and some lament and some are stricken dumb with bitterness end of section Section 14 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Poet's Task by Arnold James I, that have merged my grief in sighing ocean, Scoured the blue fields of heaven on joy, my star, Laughed with the curving lips of light in motion, Prayed the deep prayers of waters echoing far. Now stoop a slave to unknown force, To fashion from clay of words, Pale image of that form whose eyes were starry With the young spring's passion, Whose dancing feet were winged with a storm. To have ransacked sorrow's treasury, Twined strange blooms in the crown of life, Culled from no dew-fed field, To have pitted valor of soul Against those dooms gods bow to, Charged the ranks that cannot yield, Was not enough. But swayed by some strange madness, I must be sculpturing in sweat and pain from marble of my victory and my sadness shrines to dream deities beautiful and vain. End of section. Section 15 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. God Called Me to His Side by Arnold James God called me to his side, saying, My ignorant child, behold this glass. Here, while the ripples you call centuries glide over the little sandy stretch of time, your carnivals of ignorance and crime, faithfully enfigured for my gazing pass, you have asked first to be wise, then take my glass and drain the utter truth with unveiled eyes. And loudly I replied, Lord of all worlds, and what we know not else, grasp thou this dim reflector thou hast made, this little human soul, where the confused images jostle whereon I have mused, of all thy sickening heavens in fearful hells wisdom is thine alone my soul's glass tells but what thou orderest and hast foreknown pallid he waxed the omnipotent all vast tokening he dared not this then love up void I struck his trembling hand, and seized 
and cast that shameful mirror down the unechoing void. End of section. Section 16 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Now from Light of the Sun by Arnold James Now from Light of the Sun my eyes are hidden. I live my days asking none of his rays. All is over and done, save in the shadowed place, the cave, to list the musical wave. Fill full each green recess of curious carven creek and pool, forever shadow cool. Ah, the deep caress of the running wave, where lingers yet the voice of a long regret. All deeply stirred pain, when the beloved shadow grows, murmurous with echoes, bringing to life again all the beauty a heart has known and made its own. End of section. Section 17 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Two fragments from the Spanish by Alvaro Velez Ladron de Guevara. 1. Learn, O oh flowers, from me what yesterday leaves today. For yesterday I was a glory. Today not even my own shadow am I. The morn yesterday was my cradle. The night gave me my coffin. Without light, should I have died. But the moon lent me her light, for amongst you none avoideth death that cometh in this wise. Sweet consolation, the carnation, is to my brief span, for the gods who allowed me a day gave scarcely two to her. Ephemeral of the orchard lived I amongst the crimson. The jasmine is a flower of beauty, brief her life, for she counts but few more hours than her star has rays. If amber quickened into blossom, in this flower her life would be contained. The stalk, though her fragrance be coarse, lives through the whole of May. But I would die a glory and not live like the stalk. To no flower the sun concedes terms more generous than to the sublime sunflower, Methuselah amongst flowers. Many flattering eyes I saw in her leaves. Learn, O oh flowers, from me what yesterday gives today. For yesterday I was a glory. Today, not even my own shadow am I. Two from romance thus risello sang at his guitar with three strings he of the white cape and of the black ribs he that has moreover fooled a siren device against false ones who sing and cause annoyance how easy she made it she whose voice he forgot for love that is both bird and child, if not a free gift, flies away. I say that thus he was, singing with the treble of a crow, and hearing him were four corners, two streets, and a tavern. End of section Section 18 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Fables 
by Sir Cheverell Sitwell. Who taught the centaur first to drink, ladling his huge hands from the brink, when other monsters lie and lap the waters like a fruitful pap? The same who, by ingenious ways, taught the chameleon his rays to take from leaves of towering trees, strung thick with dewbells, that the bees set ringing till they bring the honey, thrilled with music, gold with money, back to their castles in the clouds. And the chameleon, his crowds of foes to fight with, has two eyes that travel sideways, no surprise on any side. He swiftly sees all, flowers, slow-floating birds, and bees. The gentle, loving unicorn will never eat the grass, or bushes have too many thorns, their leaves are made of brass. His horn has given him to take the soft fruit from the trees. Please grasp my horn and roughly shake, O nymph, among those leaves, this pear transfixed upon my horn. I cannot reach, beyond the brim, clutched at. She misses. It has gone. Alas, you've got it. I can't swim. To comb a satyr's silken beard, Arabian travellers aspire. They beg, they bribe. More loved than feared, the satyr trots to take his hire. Fawning, he takes, from outstretched hand, such fruit his eyes have sometimes seen on swaying branches, where the land sighs in a soft wind, and the green leaves shake beneath the nightingale. Thus cajoled, they can reach his beard where gums lie, gathered from the frail flowers he feeds on, where no voice is heard. End of section Section 19 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Fountains by Sir Cheverell Sitwell. This night is pure and clear as thrice refined silver. Silence, the cape of death, lies heavy round the bare shoulders of the hills. Faint throbs and murmurs, at moments growing to a mutter, then subsiding filled the night with mystery and panic. The honey-tongued arguings of fountains stir the air with flutes and gentle voices. The graven fountain masks suffer and weep. Curved with a smile, the poor mouths clutch at a half-remembered song, striving to forget the agony of ever laughing, laughing while they hear the secrets echoed from the depths of earth beneath them. This half-remembered song, this flow of sad, restrained laughter, jars with the jets of youthful water springing from the twisted masks, for this is but the birth of water, and singing joyfully it springs upon the world and wanders ceaselessly along its jewelled valleys to the sea, rattling like rolls of drums the shells and pebbles down its bed. The endless argument of water ceases. A few drops fall heavily, splashing on the marble. A sultan with his treasures, seeking to gain the goodwill of his love, pouring before her chains of crackling pearls and weeping heavy jealous tears, because she will not heed him. March 3rd, 1917 End of section Section 20 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Psittakis Eowis Imitatrix Alis Ab Indis by Sir Cheverell Sitwell. Psittakis Eowis Imitatrix Alis Ab Indis. Ovid. The parrot's voice snaps out. No good to contradict. What he says, he'll say again. Dry facts like biscuits. His voice and vivid colours of his breast and wings are immemoriably old, old dowagers dressed in crimped satin, boxed in their rooms, like specimens beneath a glass in violet. 
and never changing their memory of emotions dead the ardour of their summers sprayed like camphor on their silken parasols in tissued in a cupboard reflective but with never a new thought the parrot sways upon his ivory perch then gravely turns a somersault through rings nailed in the roof much as the sun performs his antics as he climbs the aerial bridge we only see through crystal prisms in a falling rain. March 1st, 1918 End of section Section 21 of Wheels, The Third Cycle This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Whitson by Sir Cheverell Sitwell how hot the bank on which we lie! The green paint is melted on the seat nearby so that you cannot touch it. Small yellow flowers, glazed white with heat, that snap like glass when you pick them. Grass, like a parrot's wing, burnt yellow here and there by the sun's hot stare. So high this cliff stands from the water that the drop itself into the cooler sea makes a faint wind up here refreshing like cold water drunk from a spring or the wafting of far music on the bird wings of a cool wind the sea sleeps ever under the sun's hot trumpet while patches of weed float in the water to make the surface darker where the dying sun has caught the windows of the town you see their glare reflected in the water a wall of quivering sparks a crackle in the heart of waves while cat's paws play among the weed till the long strands raised on a wave's back shine like wet hair in the sun one cloud far out comes nearer takes my soul back to the grey tunnel of every year's hard work till the young year's holiday again february twenty eighth nineteen eighteen end of section Section 22 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Pindar by Sir Cheverell Sitwell. Pindar asleep beneath the plains. Then every zephyr shook his shoulder, struck the pale discs, sent silver showers beneath the moon to clothe his young, tired body with those pallid leaves and Pan let from his shuttered hive the snub-nosed honey-bees escape. A whir of sound, throb, flutter, feather flight of birds, and on the poet's lips the swarm descends to suck his breath. Now Pan has learnt his song, and sings it on the mountains. The centaurs, gurgling the honeyed waters, take hands from lips, retire to caves. Each satyr, Every grape-gatherer can hear their panicked rumblings. Now the song lulls. Centaurs breathe again. To daylight. Sniff around. Then gallop down the hills. Beneath the cliffs, poor fishermen hear thunder thudding of the hooves and sail for sea. They think a hissing thunderbolt will fall about their heads. And from the cliffs, the centaurs hear flutes like bird flights through the air, all regular, then flurry of the wings as breath fails in the player, and fevered pluckings at a harp are birds beneath a canopy of leaves, who preen their feathers, strike their beaks upon each quill, re-echoing with airborne ecstasy. Could one imprison fire within a pipe of glass to catch the surge and shrinkage of its flames, I think we'd have, in one small pipe, a man could play on. Every plunge through chasms, where the winds play, through bell-clear ringing sounds of rain, through painted distances aloof as dreams, and every beat their wings make on clouds reverberant as caverns. And with these flute sounds came the floundering of horns that play among the waves, like porpoises who roll against the stiffened backs of water that the waves flap when they break sonorously. 
they say that every sound upon the earth is mirrored echoed in the upper air and never dies so when the sound the centaurs heard from passing galleys were washing like young tides among the clashing cymbals we call stars they broke in firm against the songs the sirens sang and the stifled cry of sappho falling to her death and still there rose the lyre-strung voice of pindar fresh and honey-sweet rejuvenate in spite of pan february eleventh nineteen eighteen note there are two legends of pindar one tells how when he was asleep in a wood whilst quite a baby a swarm of bees settled on his lips the other describes how pan stole pindar's song and sang it on the mountains in this poem these two incongruous elements have been combined it is on the same principle that bad greek wine is improved by the addition of rancid honey end note end of section section 23 of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain outskirts by sir cheverell sitwell the gold voice of the sunset was most clearly in the air as i wandered through the outskirts of the town and here disposed upon the grass i see confetti thick the amorous couples what thoughts what scenes evoke evaporate in leaden minds like theirs can i create them these things which mean the happiness of multitudes a river bank grass for a dancing floor the concertina's wail and then the darkening day raise your eyes from ground to trees and see them stretch elastically tall and taller then look along the banks all frayed of the canal where we are sitting the water lies like a sword with marks of rust where the sun has caught it lie back and listen watch the reflections you see the ripples run among the leaves brush them aside like painted birds that sing within the lattices the sun's hot bars make with the branches in china i am told my dear the temples are outlined with bells that swing in the wind or clash beneath the rain showers so when these ripples play among the trees or any insect drops upon the water the rings and circles spread make the whole trees shiver and far down you hear clash upon clash the ringing of the bells that jangle with the leaves you cannot pierce those distances look up look up night is slowly coming to fill the valleys drench the hills and free us from the suffocation of the sunset on lands all turbulent with heat the small white houses dancing on the rim of the horizon like aproned children in a schoolyard are stilled the far-off hills stand solitary made yellow by the sun beneath them where the river winds you hear the spurting of a gramophone a fountain playing with discoloured water and the strumming of a piano too far for voice to carry jerks like a moat before our eyes for all the instruments men make play on a public holiday that bird-like we may play upon a reed or let a nightingale we've made sing among our trees of sentiment december thirty first nineteen seventeen End of section. Section twenty four of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Rebellion by Iris Tree. If I were what I would be, and could break the buttressed fortress of stupidity where laws are sentinels and lies the masonry surrounded with inertia weedy lake where centuries of mud lie curdled and the fake grandeur of cardboard turrets solemn puppetry the gods are blinking at us sleepily 
tired of our games the muddles that we make the bloodshed idol worshipping the chess of king queen castle bishop knight and pawn the rigid squares of black and white they dress with their perpetual challenge faded worn are all the creeds and praises you profess to weary gods that stretch themselves and yawn End of section. Section twenty five of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Confessional by Iris Tree. I could explain the complicated lore that drags the soul from what shall profit him to gild damnation with his choicest gold but you are poring over precious books and do not hear our plaintive frivolous songs for we in stubborn vanity ascend on ladders insecure toward the tottering balconies to serenade our painted paramours caught by the lure of dangerous pale hands oblivion's heavy lure on sleepless eyes that cheat between unrest and false repose and we are haunted by spectral joy once murdered in a rage now taking shape of pleasure disguised in many clothes and skilful masks I could disclose the truth that hangs between our lies and jostle sleep to semi-consciousness truth that stings like nettles our frail hands dare not pluck from out our garden's terraced indolence we are not happy and you make us dumb with loving hands reproachful on our lips nor can we sob our sorrows on your breast for we have bartered diamonds for glass our tears for smiles eternity for now end of section section twenty six of wheels the third cycle this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Rose by Iris Tree What do you ask of me with your beauty? What are you urging of labour and painful aspiring to flatter your perfection? What secretness of love, with terrible blushes surging unseen, have found in you at last their passionate reflection? what dreams that lovers knew asleep with subtle magic tore off the rags of life and made her dance with body spangled drew back the vacant hours the tedious and the tragic and showed the glittering souls from bodies we had mangled what dreams have made you emblem of longing and love that has died unrequited and all lost joys and tears and beauty passionately given winked at by folly secured by the butcher danced on and slighted now resurrected to show their slayers the colour of heaven you have burst from the mire with your joy you are pining and bleeding the scent of you poignant with sorrowful love oh memories clinging what do you ask of my soul with such fierceness of pleading i that was glad to forget what do you need of my singing end of section section twenty seven of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain analysis by iris tree i was born in a moment of doubt between joy and pain 
in a moment of jealousy between desire and hate the fates had forged my spirit to a sword then melted it into a drinking cup they shattered it to fragments as they sipped and made a mirror of its brittleness the perplexity of many dreams i am the trivial roses at a funeral that will not pine at death i am the day before disaster the morning after feasting the ball that tosses between grief and hope alighting never in their clever play i am the restlessness of inexpression the indolence of voices stilled with sleep end of section Section 28 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Revision by Iris Tree. The scandalmonger, after all, is right. The old and cunning voice with wearying repetition is justified in all dull words and warnings. I see at last how you, spendthrift of passion in love's bankruptcy, borrow new beauty from each passing face how being too lavish you did steal from generous hands you are the idol builder and the robber of temples praising with passionate psalms the thing you cannot worship and yet your prayers have stirred belief in us we see beyond the false and weary face into your haggard soul and trust from pity we hear beyond the idle music of your voice a wisdom taught by cruelty and a tired scorn of treachery and guile we see your wounds and weep you meet our pity with a traitor's kiss no you are schooled in suffering and schooled in teaching pain to others and all that mob of furious accusation to which you turn the cheek or curse so well are but the ghosts of bodies you have murdered that drive you on in vengeance to fresh crime end of section section twenty nine of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain romance by iris tree when i am weary at the antic chants the hobby horses and the wooden lance the hope and fear in jugglery and see how starved the juggler mean and miserly and life a laboured trick the years advance a shrilling chorus in affected dance with lust of many eyes that watch and wink fixed on them or a clown in feverish pink will draw gross laughter by a hideous prance vulgarity and sin and souls askance where fiddles squeal and all the follies spin till when the stage is empty harlequin through curtained silence trips as from a trance with blushing flowers for columbine romance end of section section thirty of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain gourmet by iris tree how often when the thought of suicide with ghostly weapon beckons us to die the ghosts of many foods alluring glide on golden dishes wine in purple tide to drown our whim things danced before the eye like tasselled grapes to tantalus 
the sly blue of a curling trout the battened pride of ham in frills complacent quails that lie resigned to death like heroes july peas a muffin or a crumpet tea to drink and honey gathered from the clover bees a peach with velvet coat some prawns in pink a slice of beef carved deftly stilton cheese and cup where berries float and bubbles wink end of section section thirty one of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain return by iris tree the curtains are drawn as though it still were night a slip of dawn between them is a dangling silver ribbon and all about the room is quietness each patient chair erect alert in place a letter on the table and a book lie as you left them now bereft of purpose garish a little in the room's sedateness you returning dressed so frivolously in all your coloured clothes how grey and sober full of placid wit the furniture the pictures on the wall how steely swift the light stabbing you to the heart as you stand at the window bright as rushing blood garish your hair your shoes your startling chalky face and white white gloves what time is it still ticks the tireless clock with face grimacing nearly six it is yet hurries not nor lingers like our hearts for in its dial eternity is housed a cock should crow there are no cocks in town but a water-cart with surly noise below grates unconcerned along the disconsolate street how cold and how familiar all these things to you so lonely in the enormous dawn slowly unfastening that vermilion dress end of section section thirty two of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain islands by iris tree as launched upon the loneliness of time we float and dream of what the waves conceal each like a thought that rolls with rapid zeal succeeded by a breaker of fierce crime or curling passion or a rhythm of rhyme or indolent ripple sighing at the keel beyond us though our fettered longings reel the lulled horizon sleeps the still hours climb so toss our weary ships till from afar our visioned island rises suddenly where palaces like cloudy colours are with scented gardens terraced to the sea the silver steps to our appointed star where gleams the spires that pierce eternity end of section Section 33 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Predestination by Sherard Vines The clergyman's daughter, for she claimed that parentage, conducted me down streets truncated, 
like things maimed in creative brutality then in her ordinary room like seven hundred in a row shortly i came to know her malediction and doom having once laid my head upon her bosom i could osculate things hard and bitter she had done inexorable things and great ordinances then with the drink clairvoyant i observed her mind like a column of steel or zinc with graven numbers ranked and lined while far below the endearing names reeled off i caught a small still word the distant sharpening of a sword the rustle of eternal flames end of section section 34 of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain clark song by sherard vines after the office hours chime away and hurrying souls drift homeward one by one the long shadows that follow the dead sun wake and become coherent just as a sequence of words is strung into a lay their cool blue fingers recreate my thought they slant in curious shapes across the bricks a cube a hippogriff a crucifix a grape cluster that drips its crimson draught of anaesthesia as i have long sought among the chimneys i can just discern cloud coveys as of cranes and pelicans some jewelled like macaw or peacock fans one more fantastical a gilt wyvern joyously hunting down wide grades that burn with hazy sunset calling a wild call while to the darkening corner of my room gigantic masters for their purpose come and watch me ranged on black thrones round the wall so i can gather healing from them all end of section Section 35 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sunrise by Sherard Vines. They give. The vedettes of night go scampering in with ebon faces. The stars, their spear points, wane. Pull, Pierrois, Eus, after them. The black host yields, and the white host chases. Pull, Ithan, Phlegon baptize them with fire never a truce till to their cellars basalt black behind their columns of porphyry charnel stinking they creep and cry like the damned of apocalypse o oh, hills cover us o oh, dark cliffs make ruin on our obscenity coal-hoofed satan crouches and mourns mahound's pale crescent dips vanguard with long scarlet trumpets set your feet on the seas and blare wild reveille whose light a sound echoes on every brazen tower run before his face bright clouds like phenicopters but more rare wine-red staining the early air shaking your coloured plumes in showers his stiff-maned team strain after and part the flames like meadow grass roofs and trees break into laughter of rippling light when they behold what perfect glory shines upon the limpid geometric space the life the resurrection the dear and pitiless head of gold end of section section thirty six of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain little mother of sorrows by Sherard Vines. Little mother of sorrows, what is her desire? Pence to buy a drop of milk and a few coals for a fire. My baby gets no milk from me, he's crying out for food. I don't know who his daddy is, but one that was no good. Yes, sir, I used to walk the streets before I got so ill, and now I sell spring flowers or beg since there's two mouths to fill 
little mother of sorrows with holes in your thin shoes and little son of sorrows with your bare pink toes no one in this midland town cares for you at all so go into the workhouse or drown in the canal End of section. Section thirty seven of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Pandemos by Sherard Vines. Here sits the violet queen of all men's lust, Palmnay, as old as cities, yet as young and strong as water. Palmnay with the red mouth and soft sweet tongue and little white feet dabbling in the dust who never lacks a priest nor wants a daughter look on her all you people passing by see she can make her face more fair than you more white in hue her skin against the garment of cramosy and swaggering tulip scarlet and winking gold clamped patterned manifold under the two full firm rounds of her breasts betwixt whom clean and cold a virgin's pearl for immaculate childhood rests spit on her with the red stones in her hair laugh at her languid posturings on some fell of young she-leopard clouded in the smell of poisonous eastern incense or of rare unholy arums and red flowers on graves or riding a goat shameless and stripped bare lash her because she is unchampioned curse her because she laves her robes in her own blood to make them look more red her own blood passer-by she gave to you knowing you had good money in your purse you taught her mouth to curse her body all unholy things to do you taught her from the darkness of your heart and yet you pass and wonder what devil's son it was that pulled her under forgetting that rich man who played the devil's part let his soul rest in peace for he has paid not so you queen whose body has no bloom not so red flower whom men have drunk empty of honey you have still chastening wherewith to make the strong afraid behind your scarlet petals you can fill graves with a silent company of fools where nerve and man's blood cools we need you so we peg you down with laws that fit your shame to our hypocrisy we have forgotten why the galilean saved you from our kind but hit and stroke you with the self-same paws o oh, write your bitter words that we may find them in our flesh and kneel to you and own we reap the ugly things that we have sown End of section. section thirty eight of wheels the third cycle this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A New Ballad of Deves and Lazarus by Sherard Vines Deves was a rich man, and had a silk bed, and Lazarus worked for Deves to get his meat and bread. Lazarus worked for Deves with a hundred of his kind, and all his night was weariness, and all his day was grind. Now Deves, Master Deves, our lives ooze out for you till our chests and cheeks get hollow and our lips are pale and blue we've children in the tenements a crying out for milk while you can dine off wild fowl and you can sleep on silk to give us more a penny or two is but a little thing you pay a pound for a working man and a hundred for a ring deves grieved at their lack of thank and turned away his face so lazarus went out on strike and another took his place for lack of meat did lazarus get weakly and get sick till sores came out on his body that never a dog would lick now deves was a good man and just in all men's sight so when he died he went to heaven as is a just man's right and lazarus was a foul man that cursed against his master whereat the seven deadly sins hailed him to hell the faster End of section. Section thirty nine of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Prophet by Sherard Vines. When the glory of the Lord comes, it's like a mighty wind. 
you hear it roar and thunder in the forests there behind and when the blast is on you and the rocks begin to nod your soul flaps like a pennon in the holy wind of god then you fly like an eagle and run like a wolf hunt the roads till sundown and brood on the gulf you are dumb as a sepulchre for no man can afford to miss the stinging music of the glory of the lord far far beneath you to the great sister seas bellow one to other and fall upon their knees the sons of god are out and set a veil upon the moon they tell the seven stars that the lord is in his noon yes it's given to a few men to run before the wind and hear it roar and thunder in the forests there behind and when the blast is on them and the rocks begin to nod to feel their souls as thistle down in the holy wind of god End of section. Section forty of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Song for Grocers by Sherard Vines. Heaven bless grocers' shops, wherein raisins are with tawny skin, Murray wine, and green liqueurs curious spice in canisters honest ham and mother tea isinglass and caraway rennet vinegar and salt that honour has and clear cobalt coffee that swart mussulman caviar the caspian suave oil angry condiments anchovies and sweet essence of clove and almond honeycomb jam our english orchards from portly cheeses full of mould sugars and treacles brown or gold soap to keep us pure and white candles the slim suns of light butter like the flour of gorse wheat meal fine and oatmeal coarse soda for our maid service sago tapioca rice an economic trinity bacon friend ham's affinity bananas which the people please proletarian oranges while of fruits in syrup a frequent cornucopia eggs fresh within and white without cocoa of origin devout nuts and string and brooms and mops saveloys and lollipops god be good to grocers shops end of section Section 41 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. War Strike by Sherard Vines Last night we nearly killed a scab. The swine kicked his face open. Did he pray or whine? Not he. But kill me if you like, he said. I don't know I'd not just as soon be dead with men like you stopping steam coal to feed our ships in the cold sea and all for greed god haven't any of you boys away in france there fighting when he'd had his say we knocked him in the mud and thrashed him well the fool of course i've children in that hell the trenches but by christ children or not i'm loyal to my union and my lot End of section. Section 42 of Wheels, the Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sugar for the Birds by Edith Sitwell. 1. Saint Jury. Summer afternoon in hell. Down the empty street it fell. Pantaloon and scaramouche. Tongues like flames and shadows louche. Flicker down the street together in the spangled weather flames bright singing birds that pass whistled wares as shrill as grass landscapes clear as glittering glass whistled all together papa jai oh papa jai buy our greenest fruits oh buy melons misty from the bloom of mellow moons on some hot night melting in the august light apples like an emerald shower 
nectarines that falling boom on the grass in greenest gloom peaches bright as parrot's feather glistening from the moon's bower checkered like fratilleries fat and red are strawberries parrot voices shrill together now they pelt each monkey face pantaloon with simian grace from the soft gloom till they smother both the plumed headdresses with the green fruit gems that glitter twinkling sharp sounds like a zither sharp each bird tongue shrills and hisses parrot voices shrieking vain down comes every spangled shudder with a sudden noise like rain two the avenue in the huge and glassy room pantaloon with his tail feather spangled like the weather panache too with many a plume watch the monkey fanfreluche shivering in his gilded ruche fawn upon the piano keys flatter till they answer back through the scale of centuries difference between white and black winds like hurricanes of light change the blackest vacuums to a light barred avenue semitones of might and right then from matter life comes down that lengthy avenue leading us we know not where sudden views creep through the air oh the keys we stumble through jungles splashed with violent light promenades all hard and bright long tails like the swish of seas avenue of piano keys meaning comes to bind the whole fingers separate from thumbs soon the shapeless tune comes bestial efforts at man's soul what though notes are false and shrill black streets tumbling down a hill fundamentally i am you and you are me octaves fall as emptily three the blackamoor goes to hell when i was young and first began to think and dress and be a man i said deliberately bad i'll be both sober cross and sad because they say that hell is hot but now i wish that i had not i pray for little golden fires to cling about my flesh like wires wherein dark singing birds are caught but all my wishes count for naught and as through spangled streets i go like flashing hummingbirds the snow among the trees with bright plumes spread silvers the wool upon my head and blackamoor no longer proud is pure as any sparkling cloud four switch back by the blue wooden sea curling laboriously coral and amber grots cherries and apricots ribbons of noisy heat binding them head and feet horses as fat as plums snort as each bumpkin comes giggles like towers of glass pink and blue spirals pass oh how the vacancy laughed at them rushing by turn again flesh and brain only yourselves again how far above the ape differing in each shape you with your regular meaningless circles are five falsetto song when i was young in ages past my soul had cast man's foolish shape and like a black and hairy ape my shadow he now mimics me follows slinking in my shade through the corridors of life stifling twixt the walls i made with the mud and murderous knife takes the pulse of my black heart never once controls my will apes me selling in the mart songbirds hate did kill end of section Section 43 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain.
Stopping Place by Edith Sitwell In highly varnished, noisy heat, as through a lens that does not fit, the faces jolt in cubes, and I perceive their odd solidity and lack of meaning absolute. For why should noses thus protrude, and to what purpose can relate each hair so queerly separate? Anchored upon the puff of breeze as shallow as the crude blue seas, the colored blocks and cubes of faces seem Noah's arks that shelter races of far absurdities to breed their queer kind after we are dead. Blue wooden foliage creaks with heat, and there are woolen buns to eat. Bright varnished buns to touch and see, and black as an inferno, tea. Then, records blue, a puff of wind, heredity regains my mind. And I am sitting in the train, while thought becomes like flesh, the brain not independent but derived from hairy matter that half lived, identities not round or whole a questing beast who thirsts for soul the furry vegetation there purring with heat sucks in the air and dust that's gathered in the train protecting flesh seems almost brain that horny substance altering sight how strange intangible is light whence all is born and yet by touch we live the rest is not worth much the world grows furry now with sleep, but I must on the surface keep. While mammoths from the heat are born, great clumsy trains with tusk and horn, whereon the world's too sudden tossed through frondage of our mind and lost. End of section. Section 44 of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain myself on the merry-go-round by edith sitwell to robert nichols the giddy sun's kaleidoscope the pivot of a switchback world is tied to it by many a rope the people flaunting streamers furled metallic banners of the seas the giddy sun's kaleidoscope casts colors on the face of these cosmetics of eternity and powders faces blue as death beneath the parasols we see gilt faces tarnished by sea breath and crawling like the foam each horse beside the silken tents of sea in whirlpool circles takes his course huge houses Humped like camels chase the wooden horses ceaseless bound. The throbbing, whirring sun that drags the streets upon its noisy round. With tramways chasing them in vain, projects in colored cubes each face, then shatters them upon our brain. The house fronts hurl them back, they jar upon cross currents of the noise. Like atoms of my soul they are. They shake my body's equipoise. A clothesline for the muse to fly, So thin and jarred and angular, Her rags of tattered finery. Beneath the heat of trees' sharp hue, A ceaseless whir, metallic green, Sounds like a gimlet shrilling through the mind To reach the dazzling sheen of meanings Life cannot decide. Then words set all awry, and you are left upon the other side. Our senses, each a wooden horse, we paint till they appear to us like life, and then queer strangers course in our place on each pegasus. The very heat seems but to be the product of some man-made force, steam from the band's machinery. The heat is in a thousand rags, reverberant with sound, whose dry frayed ends we never catch seem tags of our unfinished entity and like a stretched accordion the houses throb with heat and flags of smoke our tunes light plays upon the band's kaleidoscopic whir tears up those jarring threads of heat the crowds plush mantles seem to purr crustacean silk gowns take the beat from houses 
each reverberates with this vitality and stir the giddy heat acerberates and in the swirling restaurant where liqueurs at perpetual feud dispute for sequined lights and taunt hot leaves our dusty souls exude their sentiments while scraps of sense float inward from the band and flaunt disturb the general somnolence end of section section forty five of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain apricot jam by edith sitwell beneath the dancing glancing green the tea is spread amid the sheen of pince glints of thought thus seen in sharp reflections only brain perceives the world all flat and plain in rounded segments joy and pain the parasols dance in the sun cast wavering nets of shade that run across the chattering table's fun the laughing faces and across half-shadowed faces looking cross and black hair with a bird-bright gloss the flashing children stayed and checked smooth india-rubber leaves reflect their parrot green on circumspect glazed china where the negroid tea reflects the world's obscurity in highlights such as pince see and dark leaves with their shadows feather muslin frocks like plumes together in the hot and flashing weather bird high voices shrill and chatter with the cool and glinting clatter teacups make and whispered patter listen and you'll get a slap worlds are small as any map and life will come our way mayhap end of section section forty six of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain song from the queen of palmyria by edith sitwell and shall we never find those diamonds bright that were the fond queen of palmyria's eyes ah dark hot jewels lie hidden from the sight beneath dark palm trees where the river sighs beyond the tomb of young eternities and in the desert lonely flowers weep the clouds have such long hair that tangles sleep end of section section forty seven of wheels the third cycle this librivox recording is in the public domain two nocturnes by edith sitwell one vacuum blown through the leaden circles of our hell each wisp of soul tattered by winds of lust clawed at the voices beaten like a bell no movement ever raised the lifeless dust as blown beneath the night's enormous pall we call to you with goatish prance and paces our lips are red as nights of festival and hell has dyed its fires upon our faces these barren bodies may no children breed to quench the sun with their corrupted breath save these our hearts our breasts our bodies feed the fruit of love like ours the worms of death within our brain the darkness slowly fell our eyes dark vacuum reflects no days no voice no sight no thought within our hell but only flesh our loneliness allays two elonanthan the pilleur parole monotonously fell the rain like thoughts within an empty brain the lolling weeds that fattened there absorbed the broken lifeless air do those dim eyes still hold a flame that leaps to heaven at my name mine eyes would hold god's face in sight but your lips burned away the light within your brain the blood runs high 
you came like thought you licked it dry oh we have burnt our souls with lust till they are whiter than the dust now are they white as purity you blind mine eyes i cannot see i am so tired i fain would creep to hide within your heart and weep my heart is dust no tears to shed but carrion lives it lives i said end of section Section 48 of Wheels, The Third Cycle. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Press Cuttings The Nation The nine original singers, harpies like nightingales, and nightingales like harpies, who sat balefully chirping upon the walls of old Babylon. We are charmed by these ingenious and fertile, able young writers. The Times Literary Supplement None of them sing. Today They have, apparently, come to the conclusion that there is some mysterious virtue in originality. The Morning Post The second cycle of wheels will probably annoy the middle-aged critic as much as the first. Once more the air will be darkened by the critical brickbats. Morbid, macabre, precious, unwholesome, insincere, and other epithets of the kind which the Grisarskler are in the habit of hurling at the heads of each successive generation of flamboyance. The whole book is the protest of eager and aspiring youth against the exhausted truths which are now no more than living lies. Fifty years hence, its appearance will be remembered as a literary event, as an omen of an intellectual awakening. Apteryx in the Egoist Wheels is a more serious book than Georgian poetry. It is not Mr. S. P. B. May's sort of poetry at all. These are not the good boys of the sixth form. The Observer In 1916, an anthology of ultramodern verse by a little group of young poets flung itself at the critics. The second cycle of Wheels is a challenge like the first. Every page shouts defiance of poetic conventions, as resolutely gloomy as ever, piling towers of rich imagery to describe squalor. It is a love of truth that makes them shun romantic subjects. They are all practised verse writers. They are all clever and stimulating. Every man. For men who practise the craft of verse-making, Wheels will be the most interesting book of the year. There are enough splendid sombre pictures and great phrases to justify a dozen volumes of verse. Commonwealth. The very cover of the volume is calculated to establish a reign of terror on any respectable bookshelf. Within, the dazed reader's impression is of a riot of many coloured figures, violently gesticulating, with here and there attractive impenetrable gloom, pierced by the shrieks of tortured victims. The New Age My general impression is that the verses were written by people with nerves. On the whole, modern English poetry, in striking contrast to modern Slavonic poetry, for example, suffers from a lack of nerves, which gives it what I am inclined to call a wooliness of outline. Many of the poems in Wheels are almost Slavonic in this respect. The Globe Mr. Blackwell has incurred the gratitude of lovers of literature by the encouragement he has already given to our younger poets, and the debt is increased by his recent publication of Wheels. The second cycle of Wheels is, in its way, as notable a phenomenon as the Yellow Book. Weekly Dispatch on the whole, I think we should be grateful to Mr. Blackwell for wheels. Note. Et tu, Brute? Editor of Wheels. End note. Pioneer. In wheels, we have discovered nothing to interest us 
except the press notices of the first cycle published modestly at the end. As the young authors appear to be pleased with their posturing and the remarks it has elicited from indiscreet reviewers, we do not propose to add to their amusement, for amused they must have been if they have any sense of humour at finding themselves taken seriously by anyone. They are apparently able to pay for the pleasure of publication, but theirs is a form of luxury which should be heavily taxed under the new scheme. Note. Any reviewer who would like to call upon the editor will find her happy to produce photographs of counterfoils of all cheques sent by the contributors during the last three years. End of section.